Steven Hillenberg, it is so good to have you back working for SpongeBob SquarePants. It really, really is. One, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, and I'm here to review the SpongeBob episode Lost and Bikini Bottom. So, Lost and Bikini Bottom is SpongeBob going to work 15 minutes early, so on his way, he decides to take the shortcut in order to get to work quicker. But guess what? He gets Lost and Bikini Bottom, and that's really it honestly because it's a very basic episode. So this is from Jack Pendarvis. This is his first time writing a Spongebob episode and he also wrote this by himself along with Tudor Sauce. I actually really enjoyed this episode. It's a simple episode but the thing that I always love about Spongebob, and I know you all hear me say this lots of times in my other previous Spongebob reviews, I always love it when Spongebob could take things simple, and that's what basically Lost of Bikini Bottom did, because it's just Spongebob taking a shortcut, getting Lost of Bikini Bottom, and trying to get to the Krusty Krab. However, I think it's kind of a strange episode in the sense that I don't think it really needed to be made. SpongeBob could clearly see the Dusty Crab just straight ahead, literally straight ahead. It's right there, SpongeBob. You could have still walked and made it to the Krusty Krab much earlier because him taking that shortcut was not a good idea and it was kind of stupid of SpongeBob to do that in the first place. Although it kind of makes sense because you know SpongeBob can be an idiot, but still, you know, it's like, yeah, that wasn't a good idea in the first place. What does make this a very well done episode is the writing. Jack Pendarvis's writing for this episode I felt was really strong. He was self aware of this premise of SpongeBob taking the shortcut. He does do entertaining things for this aspect, like Sandy. I always complain how underused Sandy is in this show. And even though her part is not big, I love that she at least had two cameo appearances in this episode. She makes an appearance from Spongebob's Thought Bubbles. Those two scenes, you know, even though her part wasn't big, it was still good to see Sandy have a little bit of involvement to the storyline. Because Spongebob a couple of times he would think about what Sandy would tell him in terms of surviving in the wilderness. So that was really cool. So Spongebob could figure out his way out of Bikini Bottom since he's lost in Bikini Bottom and he tries to get back to the Krusty Krab before work starts. And something about the animation too, I don't know if it's just me, but I thought the animation in this episode and Tudor Sauce felt more fluid. Like I said, I don't know if it's just me. The animation looked a little different here when I was watching this episode, but yeah, animation looks so colorful. It looks a little bit more fluid. There are things in this episode I felt were a little bit inconsistent, like there's a scene where SpongeBob has to use a payphone, and that was a little weird considering SpongeBob has used a payphone before in Party Pooper Pants. And then to be honest, SpongeBob's shortcut, it really didn't feel like it lasts that long in all honesty, but I still thought for the time that he had using that shortcut, it was still really entertaining. And this, and like I said, it was just simple and very well done. Although another problem I did have is that once he's at the Krusty Krab, he literally arrives at the Krusty Krab two minutes before it starts and it is packed. It is so freaking packed when that sponge arrives there and then Mr. Krabs says what are you doing later around start cooking so that felt odd and then of course you know Spongebob he had to go home because he was dirty so he can't cook for the Krusty Krab and that was his own fault the ending with Squidward that was actually really funny right there overall I do think Lost of Bikini Bottom was a very interesting episode it was simple I don't know if it had to be made, but I can honestly say because of Jack's strong writing, he actually made this premise 
work. I think if it was a writer that didn't have as much of a strong writing as Jax for this episode, then I could have seen this episode easily falling apart, but because it felt like Jack knew what Spongebob was all about with its simplicity and with a concept like this that's really basic, he really managed to make it work and very entertaining. And I gotta say, for this being Jack's first time writing an episode, he really nailed it out of the park. And I think even with this episode, we got back some of the magic because even though Steven Hillenburg is the executive producer for this episode, for some reason, he still kind of got back the SpongeBob that you had from the earlier seasons and even some of the later seasons because even some of the later seasons, I know some people would disagree with me, I still feel has the magic of the first three seasons. So it's like this episode captured mainly the first three seasons, but some of like the later seasons and manages to make it work. So I'm going to give Lost in Bikini Bottom a 7.5 out of 10. And now I'm here to review the SpongeBob episode Tudor Sauce. So Tudor Sauce is about when Mr. Krabs teaches SpongeBob how to drive when SpongeBob once again fails his boating test. So this is another episode that Jack Pendarvis wrote by himself uh, as well as also being executive produced by Steven Hillenburg. And in all honesty, I think Tudor Sauce might be the best Spongebob episode I've seen in a very long time. This was an episode I was worried about, to be honest, when I read the plot synopsis. Because, you know, we've seen Spongebob having to do his driver's boating test. And honestly, let's be honest, that episode bumper to bumper... That episode had the full potential for Spongebob to finally have a driver's license, boating license in this case. But of course, that episode just had to still drag it on. I just want Spongebob to just have his freaking boating license already. And yes, of course, even though he does not get his boating license, I did love this episode. And I loved how this time it was actually Mr. Krabs that was teaching Spongebob how to drive. And just like with Lost in Bikini Bottom, I love the simplicity of this episode. And... And like what I said with that episode as well, it had the elements of the first season through the third season and even some of the later touches of the seasons as well. You have your simple gags, they make them quick, it's a fast paced episode but a good kind of fast paced, not where the pacing feels rushed and all over the place. It is actually a very well paced episode, it's snappy, it gets to the point. So all these bits with Mr. Krabs teaching Spongebob and Spongebob constantly crashing, Mr. Krabs having to pay so much damage, it's really funny right there. It's pretty much a running gag in this episode and honestly for me, it never feels repetitive. Pearl, even in this episode, although you see her in this episode for like 45 seconds, she actually felt like the Pearl from seasons one through three, you know? Yeah, she's still like meanish in those seasons, but not like how she's been in the later seasons. And it's kind of nice to see nice Pearl, like she just crashes into the Krusty Krab. She says, hi, daddy. That kind of gave me a reminiscent of the earlier seasons of Pearl, which I really loved. And I hope that's what we can see a little more of in the future episodes. But yeah, Pearl for the 45 seconds. I really like her because you guys know how much I can't stand the character, especially as of lately. But yeah, the 45 seconds, she was actually nice. Not once was she being whiny. And Mr. Krabs, to my surprise, he actually just gave her money. He wasn't being a cheapskate like you've been seeing him lately. He literally just gave her money without complaining or being too cheap and that was it. There's even a couple of Easter eggs in this episode to my surprise, which of course I can't go wrong with a little bit of continuity because there's a, actually a point where you do see Barry. Remember the stuff bear that spongebob one from that episode skill crane you actually see barry in this episode and another easter egg in this episode is jeffrey the jellyfish you know the one that patrick kept bugging in that episode i'm your biggest 
fanatic. Well, you actually see Jeffrey for a brief moment in the background. You have to like really pay attention to the background. And it was the scene when SpongeBob and Mr. Krabs were at the arcade. Look at the background in that arcade scene and you'll see Jeffrey the jellyfish. For me being a big old SpongeBob fan, that that makes me excited. The writing was really strong. The execution was really strong. Like I said, the pacing was very well done. As far as flaws goes, the only thing I could say is the ending. The ending was still kind of funny when Mr. Krabs ended up in Bodie's school, but the, the issue with the ending is that we've seen that ending before. It's just Mr. Krabs in boating school with Spongebob because he got a ticket. Overall, you guys, I love Tudor Sauce. I had a blast with this episode. It is simple. It captures the season one through three magic with some of the later seasons. It's the best Spongebob episode I've seen in a very, very long time. I love this episode. I'm going to give Tudor Sauce a 9.5 out of 10. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what did you think of Lost in Bikini Bottom and Tudor Sauce? How do you feel about Steven Hillenburg now officially being back? How do you feel about him being executive producers for these episodes? Would you like to see him write episodes in the future? This is 22 Tiger Dude here, you guys, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power!